let's just get right into the video. Let's just get right into it. I don't want to waste my time. Let's just get right into it and just get the little boring shit out of the way. Like the Erica Pink Eye Scrappy and Mama D situation. I don't give a fuck about what happened with this situation. I really don't. But let's talk about it anyway. So first of all, let's just say that Mama D finally stopped shopping at Kim's Beauty and Family Dollar and Dollar General for her wigs. And she finally got a stylist to give her something new. Because she really do look good. You know what I'm saying? For all these... For the first two seasons, she was looking like Mama Dracula. But now she looking like Vivica Fox's great auntie a bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she looking like she upgrading just a little bit. She kind of looking like, you know what I'm saying? She kind of looking like she worth some. So, no more Family Dollar. No more Dollar General. No more Kim's Beauty and all this shit from uptown and up in, um, up in Kanye's and all that shit. She finally got her a good stylist. So, you know, she's sitting over there talking to Scrappy about the situation that happened with Erica Pink Eye. Pink Eye. And I must say that Mama D always sympathizes with the sideline bitch or the sideline friend that wants to fuck her son, but never want to sympathize with the bitch that's in his life for real. Like, she didn't like Erica Dixon and she don't like Bambi like that, but she liked Shay and she liked Erica Pink Eye. Now, I will say that Scrappy did handle the situation the wrong way and so did Erica Pink Eye. So, all the stuff that Mama D was telling Scrappy was the truth. So, she later got... Erica Pink Eye and Scrappy together. They talked about everything. And Erica talked about how much she loves Scrappy and how she loved their friendship and you know how it mean everything to her and everything like that. So she pretty much poured out her heart to Scrappy and Scrappy apologized and owned up to his part for what he did and everything like that. And just like Mama D said, yes, Scrappy's career has not been doing has not been doing much. For a minute now, but just because she made a comment about his career does not mean that he had to go off the hinges and damn near attack her. Well, I don't know if he attacked her or not because Mona didn't even show that shit. How whatever he did, it never should have went there. And as a man, he should have walked the fuck away. That's just my opinion. And Erica Pink, I really didn't deserve that shit. So it is what it is. So let's just get into the apology party. Um, this was some funny shit to me because it looked like a scene straight out of a Tyler Perry film, more like Mom, um, Madea's family reunion, as a matter of fact. That's what the fuck it looked like. You know, you got Kurt, he got Bobby Valentino up there to sing, and I know a lot of y'all was going in on Bobby Valentino, but I actually love Bobby Valentino, so I didn't have no problem with seeing his ass up there singing. You know what I'm saying? I would have preferred him to be up there. You know what I'm saying? And I like Kirk got got some money to go get music so child or Stevie Wonder or somebody like that to sing. He had to work with what the fuck he got and what the, what type of connections he had. So he had to get Bobby V that is his friend. So why not get his ass up there? I don't have a problem with him because I got like I only got one of his albums. The very first one was Slow Down on there. But that's besides the point. I love Bobby V. You know what I'm saying? So during the party you know Rashida and um, Kurt basically letting everybody know how, you know, well, Rashida basically feels like this apology party, he's trying to go the extra mile to do better and show that he wants to be with her and that he wants to make things right with her, pretty much. So, he gets her a rented vehicle that says, just apologize, and that was really funny, and he bought um, Mama Prune some new shades or some new glasses or whatever the fuck he broke on the last few episodes, and, um... Mama Prune did not buy him no another bike, but I knew he wasn't going to do that. So, Miss Athea comes with um, Benzino, and of course, Carly and Erica already got guns blazing. So, after um, Benzino made his announcement and apologized to Rashida and everything for his part in the situation with the hot tub and all that stuff, that's when Athea wanted to apologize to, Car uh, to Erica about her part in the situation at the grand opening when she threw the drink at, um, at Carly and it hit Erica. Now, Erica pissed me off because her and Carly both tried it with Althea. And I don't know what y'all disliking Althea for because I personally don't have an issue with Althea. I like her way better than Carly Red, to be quite honest. I do feel like she came over there on some grown woman shit and she tried to apologize to Erica and Erica was being a bitch to her from the jump. She was ready to go in on her and she was ready to try her. I thought that was fucked up. In my in my head and in my opinion, that was some fuck ass shit for her to try it like that. Like, I think she really did try Althea and that's why Althea got attitude. Then Carly gonna jump into the argument talking about don't you think you owe me an apology. She'll owe your ass shit first of all. You came to the party to be messy. And you came in making snide remarks. You know, I have every number and all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So, 
they had every intention on being messy and being catty. That's all the fuck there was at that table. They were all being catty bitches. All when all Althea was trying to do was be a woman about it. When Erica and Carly wasn't being women about it. And I just wasn't here for Erica at all in that scene. And I definitely wasn't here for Carly. And she talked about what she got on her. Bitch, Benzino I already know that she smashed Stevie. So what the fuck else do you got on her, bitch? That's your problem. You always worried about somebody else's business. But worried about why, why young Jock was married the entire time you was fucking him, bitch. Why don't you worry about that shit? Why you sitting up here worrying about what the fuck somebody else doing? Sit the fuck down. See, that's why I can't fucking stand Carly. And ever since Erica been hanging out with that bitch, I haven't really cared too much for Erica myself. So let's just get that on out the way. What's next? So the Steve J and Jocelyn shit. Jocelyn went shopping and she called K Michelle or whatever, which I'm so happy to see my mom on TV. Yes. She called um K Michelle, and you know they talked about the situation. And um, she so K Michelle suggested that she come to New York and hang out with her to get away and everything like that. So Stevie J is in the studio making a hit for Jocelyn, and he sees that Jocelyn was packing up her shit and she getting ready to go. So um, when she getting ready to go, you know what I'm saying? That's when he stopped her and they argue and you know Jocelyn playing the victim again, talking about what the fuck he did to her and everything like that. But see, this is my this is my thing. Jocelyn, stop playing the victim because at the end of the day, you get what the fuck you want and you get what the fuck you deserve and you deserve every bit of what the fuck Stevie J giving you. You didn't give a fuck about what he was doing when he was doing that shit with Mimi and you was one of the reasons you was one of the one of the hoes that he was fucking on when he was doing that shit to Mimi. But you didn't give a fuck though. Long as you was getting what the fuck you want, you didn't give them. So now you want to play the victim and talk about what the fuck he did to you. Mimi sung that same song and you weren't trying to hear it. You thought it was a flop song. And look at you booking the same producer, getting the same flop hit, getting the same damn song that Mimi had. You know, Mimi song, you know, the same thing that Mimi had, you know, Mimi's song was I'm not gonna cry no more. That what Mimi's song was. And then here comes Jocelyn coming right behind Mimi with the same old record but with a different type of beat called Enough Crying. Now both of y'all crying y'all ass out talking about. Mimi said she wasn't gonna cry no more and now you saying you done had enough crying. Like get the fuck out of here with that Mary J. Blige shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Jocelyn, you don't get no motherfucking sympathy from me because you didn't have none when you was fucking Stevie knowing that he belonged to somebody else but you want somebody to feel sorry for you though bitch I would see I would never feel sorry for your ass you played the sideline whole road and you glorified it and you didn't give a fuck who told you stepped on so I'm stepping on yours bitch I'm stomping on yours I'm jumping on your toes bitch fuck you you know what I'm saying so Mimi takes Eva to Stevie because she knows that the sex tape is coming out and here she go in the damn confessional Given this, I'm every woman, Angela Bassett, I'm a strong black woman, Bernadine speech, when we all know that ain't nobody here for that. Dummy, shut the fuck up. I'm not really here for dummy. You know what I'm saying? Like, dummy is a dumb bitch. You know what I'm saying? I did, I did this. So I can provide for my daughter and everything, you know. I, I it's, it's, you know, my daughter's gonna have to deal with it. But I did this so I can provide for my daughter. But bitch, what are you talking about? You had your own clothes, um, your own cleaning company called Let's Clean It Up or something like that. And when you getting your own coins and your own funds and shit like that, and you already was getting your checks from VH1. So what the fuck do you mean you did this to provide for your daughter? Wasn't you already doing it? Or am I missing something? Or is this just some straight up bullshit that's coming out your mouth? That's what I think it is. Okay. So then, Jocelyn comes to New York. She sees the queen, K. Michelle. And, you know, they talk about everything. They catch up. You know, K. Michelle tells her what she's vocally stated before. That Carly, I mean, that Jocelyn was the only one that said congrats to her on her success. And she had her back and everything like that. And um, that's when um, Justin starts filling her in on the tea with Benzino and how he may, you know, engaged to another bitch and how the bitch fucked Stevie and everything like that. So then that's when the subject of Mimi's sex tape comes about. And then, you know what I'm saying? That's when um, K. Michelle was like, well, you know, I heard about the tape, but I didn't think that the shit was true. So they watched the tape. 
When I say that was the most hilarious reactions I have seen on the whole damn show, that was some funny shit. Like they, like they could not believe what the fuck they was seeing. You know what I'm saying? Like the shit was motherfucking funny. And you know, you got people on Twitter saying, "So when did K Michelle and Jocelyn become best friends? Did y'all not see last season toward the end? They became cool last season. Well, like where the fuck have y'all been? You know what I'm saying? Y'all so hung up on, you know what I'm saying? K Michelle was me, me friend that y'all can't even see that they became friends towards the end of the season. And then you know, just like K said, she did try to tell Mimi that Nico won shit. And Nico ain't shit because at the end of the day, he put that sex tape out. He sit up here and said that he didn't put it out if he want to, but we all know that he put that shit out. So does fucking Mimi. That's why she ain't saying shit. So then we get into Erica and Aaron. This is the flip side of the reaction. They watching it, and it's just like we watching a mini General Hospital series. They crying and shit. Erica going off, giving us this I had a dream speech about how Mimi ain't got no morals, no integrity, no nothing as a mother and all of that. And I really felt what Erica was coming from. You know, we always talk about how scripted the shit is and how some of this shit is staged. But the way that Erica was acting, I believe that she was genuinely hurt and upset after seeing that shit. Because at the end of the day, you, you know, just like Erica said... I'm not mad for me because she was a grown ass woman and she had her own decision. She had her own choices, but Eva didn't have one. And that is the truth. Eva really didn't have one. And you know, she's, I have a daughter. But she, you decide to get in front of that camera and fuck a nigga that don't give a fuck about you. He's using you for a come up. That's why he was so pressed about y'all making sex tapes and fucking on camera. And now look at you. Y'all all over the place. Got your ass blasted all over the place. You did that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not. Because at the end of the day, people have met, you know, people have taken pictures for their dudes and done shit for their dudes and or their girlfriends or something like that. Like it's a, like people do that these days. I'm not judging you for it. But when you try to play the victim, that's when I just can't sit up here and just be, you know, be down for you like that. Just own up to the fact that you fucked on camera, you wanted to do it, and you put it out for some extra money. Just say it. There's no way in hell I could judge you if you said that. But you want to play the victim. And keep yelling about your daughter. You already have one. So what do you mean? I mean you had one before you got in front of the camera and fuck. That's all I'm saying. Like I ain't trying to judge. I'm just saying. Stop trying to play the victim. So then um, we get it to Mimi and Nico doing an interview. And Mimi just looks stupid. Like she looks pathetic. And they talking about it wasn't a third person. That shit look like a straight up porn. They don't like no shit they did by itself. I, I guarantee you Josephine Johnny who was living with Nico, like K. Michelle said last season, was filming that shit, you know, was the cameraman. I really believe that shit, and I really believe that Nico got that shit edited real good and sent that shit right over there to that porn company. I don't give a fuck. And if, if Nico didn't do it by himself, Mimi was on to that shit and, and made her a damn storyline for love and hip-hop to get everybody talking about it. That's what the fuck she did. So at the end of the day, I don't feel sorry for Mimi. Mimi can cut that victim shit out because I don't give a damn about all that shit. You know what the fuck you was doing? Just all up to the fact that you fucked on camera because you wanted to. Just admit that shit or admit that you leaked the sex tape or just deal with the fact that your man leaked it. Just deal with it. Stop pretending like you the victim because you ain't, bitch. Just... Just do that. So with that being said, y'all, I'm out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed the um the collaboration video that I did with um Jamar, um, Adrian, Miss PTV, A Connection TV, and Ashley Miller. I really enjoyed doing that. So I hope you guys liked it. It's on all of our channels, so be sure to look out for that. Follow me on Twitter at Mr. Underscore Still Standing with After G. Um, be sure to follow me on Instagram at rebellious underscore Scotty and be sure to follow my Facebook fan page at Team Scotty. And I'm out of here, you guys. Till next video, peace.